one two one two in a place to be what's up y'all how y'all feel out there i am frank red and i want to once again thank you for hanging in there a couple of minutes uh behind schedule we'll start at 9 15 and uh we are getting started just a couple of minutes after that and um if I told you it was a mere bag of shells and uh, it was easy doing this show um, every time, I'd be lying. And um, had a couple of issues uh, starting up, but we here. And um, I couldn't be more um, excited about doing the show um, because there's so much to talk about. Over the past uh, 48 hours, the past week or so, there's been a lot going on in the world of sports. And, um, you know, there have been some in intersections uh, between sports as well. Um, one is hip hop. You know, you can't go to a sporting event without um, seeing some facet of hip hop in your face, whether or not you are a quote hip hop fan or rap fan, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's a part of the culture. And, um, you know, having to be the age that I am, um, being old enough to kind of reminisce some of the golden ages of when hip hop started. Um, it does nothing but put a smile on my face to uh, know where we've come um, and to think that there's so much more for us to accomplish and so many future generations to, um, um, to be exposed to with regards to hip hop, they're building Hall of Fames, uh, the Hip Hop Hall of Fame in New York. I'm sure they'll probably have some more around the world. Uh, every facet of life, uh, hip hop has touched. And I mean, you look at commercials now, uh, it's unbelievable the, you know, the impact of this art form. Uh, some of the, the challenges of hip hop is obviously uh, everybody uh, does not project uh, in a positive way and along with all of the good things that have happened uh, to hip hop and this culture, uh, there's been uh, so many tragedies as well as so many untold stories that um, are just really starting to um, reach the surface. And a lot of them are not pretty, but I, but that's part of it. I don't think that when you have any ingenious creation, um, there isn't a, another side of the equation. We're talking about AI now. and. There's, there's going to be some real issues uh, um, that are not positive concerning AI. You know, we can create a, a, a positive picture about what this new tool, this new technology is going to do for the world, but don't, but you don't want to be caught on the bad side of it. I mean, think about the possibilities. Uh, but I got inspired tonight just kind of watching uh, uh, CBS's version of the 50th year of hip hop. And it's just incredible, so well done um, to see Chuck D and Flavor Flav on stage looking good, sounding good. And so many more artists, man. It's just unbelievable. RC Rules, what's up, brother? Thank you for stepping in the dungeon. I really appreciate you. Um, along with Vicky. Hi, Vicky. Absolutely. Uh, R.I.P. Frank Wycheck. Yeah, the tight end for uh, the Tennessee Titans, the Tennessee Miracle that that that, that took out uh, the Buffalo Bills. I mean, I mean, when you saw that uh, Frank Wycheck, R.I.P., had passed away, it didn't have a tagline with regards to how he had died. And then, you know, at this point, we've all read a little deeper to realize that. Uh, Allegedly, he died from a fall in his house. You know, uh, hopefully there'll be some more information um, that comes out about that. But 52, 52 years old, um, it's never a good time to go, but certainly not 52. So uh, uh, prayers go out to uh, his family and his loved ones. But um seems like yesterday he was throwing that pass, right? He's 52. It seems like, you know, a couple of weeks ago we watched that game. Uh, but it wasn't yesterday. It was quite some time ago. Uh, 52, yeah, man. Um, right, they didn't include this. Uh, only 52 re reportedly had CTE uh, dementia, yeah. 
downside of football, you know? So I, I think that we're becoming more and more conditioned to kind of wrapping wide receivers over the middle. And, and, and it's almost like it's foreign when somebody really gets taken out. So I got to applaud, uh, you know, the NFL. I don't like everything that I see, but I think that their um, desire to make the game safer um, be, because of CTE and so many other things that can happen on a football field, it's sincere. I don't have any reason to believe that it's not sincere. Uh, so, uh, you know, the less people that we can um, have being susceptible to uh, playing this wonderful game uh, in their post-playing careers, uh, I, I think is uh, is the right way to go. And it's something that we should all applaud. Austin Rule says, I put my glasses on. It's a little too small for me to see. It is amazing how many NFL players have CTE, dementia, issues. The list is huge. Yeah, it is huge. It is. Uh, but, you know, I mean, I think they have also had the technology to explore um, what's going on with their players. Uh, boxing doesn't, I mean, there's no union in boxing. You know, there's no union in MMA, you know, so, you know, I hate to see what some of those participants, those great athletes are going to look look like 20, you know, 15, 20 years from now. As, as a matter of fact, there, there have been some MMA fighters that have died suddenly for various reasons. Anytime you start kicking around the head, there's an issue. All right. So there's nothing to play with. Reportedly, Jim Otto, Junior Seau, Tony Dorsett, Jim Plunkett, Joe Namath, Boomer Sison, Ken Stabler, uh, Frank Gifford, uh, also the center, you know, I, I can't think of his name, the, the great center from the Pittsburgh Steelers also um, was a, has had some issues uh, regarding um, uh, brain injuries once, they, uh, once, his, once, once his career was over. Uh, he's a Hall of Famer. Why can't I think of his name right now? Uh, and Vicky said, that's why I don't mind NFL players getting a big bag. Me neither. You know me, Vicky. I'm always about players getting paid. Always. Um, when I was younger and, and, and not as informed and not as smart, um, you could, yeah, right. Mike Webster is his name. Thank you, Aussie Rules. I appreciate you. Mike Webster was the great center of the Pittsburgh Steelers, uh, four-time uh, uh, Super Bowl champion. Uh, he had a rough post-playing career. And um, some of the stories that uh, were, were connected to him um, were about dementia and just uh, having uh, um, a, a, a real tough time um, from some of the effects of playing football. So thank you for that. Um, yeah, when you're young, you think you can play sports forever. You, you know, you fall on your neck, you know, you jump right jump right up, you jump out of bed, you, you might stretch a little bit and go play basketball or football. But uh, as you get older, you learn that the body is not invincible. It is fragile and you need to take care of it. And again, just kind of watching um, the 50th anniversary of hip hop, um, I take... I took great solace, so I take great solace in knowing that so many great legends are still here, uh, but we've lost a lot. I mean, one of my favorite rappers of all time is Common. I mean, I mean, not Common. I, I like Common quite a bit, but Guru, Guru from Gangstar, excuse me. Uh, Common was the last artist that I saw. With that said, you know, Common has had a sneaky, great career, and... He's made some of the greatest albums in the history of hip hop. He doesn't really get the respect and the props. He gets the respect, but he doesn't get the props. I think when you start listening to some of the greatest albums of all time, Common generally is not listed, but like Water for Chocolate, to me, that album stands up against any of the great hip hop albums of all time. I can listen to that album forever. And if you haven't listened to comments like Water for Chocolate, stream it, buy it physically. What a great album. Incredible. Vicky says his story was in 
the movie Concussion, the doctor said God didn't make men to play football. Um, yeah, I don't think God meant for you know, meant for men to play football the way that we used to play it. It's a great game, and 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 it's done a lot for people's lives. And I like football. I played a year of football in college, and um, you, you know, to compare and contrast playing football versus basketball they're two totally different games but um uh both uh have qualities that um i've incorporated in my life brotherhood sacrifice uh the meticulousness of football is pretty amazing so i'm glad we have football i am i mean it's funny vicky i was listening to you say that god didn't mean didn't um mean for men to play football Two weeks ago, I saw the movie Napoleon. And I've seen, you know, we've seen Gladiator. We've seen so many movies. Did God meant for men to run towards each other with, you know, with iron swords, with, with barely any armor on, you know, running towards horses with spears? I mean, humans have done some, some, some pretty <laughs> outrageous things. And uh, I'll take football. I mean, uh, go fight in a war with a spear and just run towards your opponent. Uh, I'll take football. <laughs> I get your point. SG, what's up? How you doing, brother? Yeah, but uh, football is a tough game, a hard way to make a living. Uh, I love it. And... Um, uh, I just think I've started to play football too late. Uh, I wish I had started to play the game a lot earlier. It's a great game. Great game. And most of the time when you play the game fundamentally right, or if, if you're coached up and your focus is not on injuring, hurting people, um, it's not as dangerous as it used to be. It really isn't. Still a tough game to play, though, no doubt. And Vicky says, football is fun to watch. Yeah, the punter running uh, for the first down. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. You know, some punters and, and, and field goal kickers, the thing I like is they take great pride in being athletes, right? Some of them will fall into that, that category where, yeah, I'm just a, you know, I'm just a field goal kicker. I'm just a punter. But, you, you know, some of them take it really serious. They go out there hunting, looking to make tackles, making blocks, and doing everything else. So they're all tough people. No one who plays football isn't tough. You know, tough men and women who play that game, kidding me? It's hard. Um, I let you guys in on a, on a little secret. Over the past week or so, I've been sleeping wrong. I've been sleeping on my shoulder, and now my shoulder is killing me. How can you hurt your shoulder sleeping? <laughs> I'm almost embarrassed to say it, but it's true. I hurt my shoulder sleeping on it. But then I go, well, think about it for a second. Dude, you're about 300 pounds. You know, if you're 300 pounds and you're lying on this, you know, this, yeah, you got big arms, but you can hurt yourself. Sleep the right way. SG says, hi, Frank, I'm doing play by play. For the San Jose State versus Santa Clara Bronco basketball game, uh, will you be in the live cast? What? So this is your own personal little deal. Give me the information. I'll check it out to see if it's worth my time. Absolutely, I'll support you. you Got to be good though, right? Because if it's not good, you can just be in your room and and not be live on air and just practice. Um. Some of my play-by-play -play friends who are professional in this industry, um, we used to be at uh, like Sacramento Kings games and literally they would be in the stands up in the rafters where nobody really cared doing play-by-play -play of the game while it was happening and just practicing. And these are individuals who ultimately uh, became professional broadcasters, uh, did NBA games, are doing NBA games, hosting shows, and it was just wonderful to see their practice. 
Uh, I would suggest you do that first, SG, unless you've already gone through the process of practicing. Because if you're going to be live on air, then I think people have a right uh, to be entertained or not. And if they're not, and if you're not entertaining them, then why would they listen? All right. I can go on a tangent, diatribe, and just talk. I, I mean, it's what I do. I can do it. All right. I want to talk about the uh, the 49ers game against the Seattle uh, Seahawks. Um, it wasn't like their best performance, but they were surgical. Um, I thought it would be a, be a competitive game because Pete Carroll is a good coach. I know Vicky don't like him, but uh, more times than not, Seattle is prepared. And the 49ers just had better players. They just had too many guns for Seattle. But two of the takeaways I take away from the 49ers game is Debo Samuels was the best player on the field today. And he's been the best player on the field for the past couple of weeks. I mean, you got all of this MVP talk. Where's Debo's name? Give that guy. I, I don't care if it's a a, 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 a a ceremonial vote or whatever the case. Debo Samuels is playing like no one else in the NFL who plays a wide receiver position. Unbelievable. How many people is he going to run away from? He balling right now. So, wow. Love watching Debo Samuels play. He's like a missile. And, he, and, 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 and he's packing some weight. He's not a skinny guy. Doesn't matter. That dude is fast and explosive. Got great hands. Loves going over the middle. And he has to make the quarterback's job a lot easier than some of the some of the other wide receivers out there. Vicky, I would agree. It was a gritty performance, not spectacular, but they did what they needed to do. They set themselves up now to uh, uh, go out to Arizona and play the Cardinals. You would expect them to win that game as well. Uh, RC Rule says Shohei seven hundred million. Yeah, you know, um, happy for him. But I got a like like in like a simple little math discussion to have. Um, it's probably not as outrageous uh, or as uh, awestrucking, uh, um, awestruck, yeah, uh, as we might think in in twenty twenty three. Literally, the Dodgers have billions and billions of dollars. You could the, the Dodgers could borrow a billion dollars. They could like create some type of billion dollar annuity if they haven't done it already and literally pay Shohei's salary off the interest. Now it's a little more complicated than that. They probably got a pretty good deal because now they're talking about some of the money being deferred. Um, good deal for any athlete to get $700 million, but they wouldn't do it if they didn't think they could make money back. Think about the television markets that's going to open up now because the Dodgers have Shohei. You have one of the greatest brands in all of sports in the LA Dodgers and now you have one of the few baseball players who is a worldwide phenomenon. So I think it's really good business for them. All right. But we want to talk about the 49ers. Um, I mean, I'm sure it's been talked about quite a bit, but um, Last week, we discussed the 49ers, and they looked like they were significantly better than every other team in the NFL. Um, throw the Dallas Cowboys up there. Uh, yeah, I mean, the 49ers whooped their, whooped their tails uh, pretty good in San Francisco. But I, I think if any of us are honest, we, we, we would have to say that nobody is playing better than Dak Prescott right now. Dak looks different. His rhythm, his timing, his decision-making, everything looks different about Dak right now. And as an, as an athlete and as a fan of sport, I tend to root more uh, for players um, more than I do teams. Now, obviously, I want the 49ers to win. Um but if the 49ers didn't, don't win, the Giants don't win, I would love to see Dak uh, Prescott win a Super Bowl. Because 
you can't even really quantify what that would do for his post playing career. Huge. I don't know how you could put those numbers together or that prestige that comes with winning the Super Bowl as a Dallas Cowboy quarterback. SG says Brock Purdy put up a career high 368 yards. Yeah, I mean, hey, man, Brock's balling. But was Brock the best player on the field? No, he wasn't. I got on I got on a little bit of a tangent. I would have mentioned another name beyond Debo Samuels. Today, I locked in because I wanted to decide for myself how good a player Trent Williams is. Trent Williams deserves some MVP votes, okay? I don't know if an offensive lineman has ever gotten votes. I would assume that they have, but nobody is playing better football in the context of what their responsibilities are than Trent Williams. Nobody. Trent Williams has a distinction, literally, of being the best pass blocker, and in the run game, he's fierce. Uh, I saw Trent Williams block two players in the run game today. Two. Took out his primary defensive guy and then slid to the side and, and hit the other guy with a shoulder to knock him down to the ground. I don't know how you negotiate with Trent Williams. You know, you, I mean, would you give him a blank check? Uh, uh, Trent, we were thinking that you would want to be here. Oh, you don't like that number? Here's a blank checkbook. How do you like that? That's how good that guy is. Vicky says, I would have paid him 800 million. The Giants owners are billionaires too. I'm sick of the Giants not spending money. Yeah, you know, Vicky, uh, I'm sure a lot of people have that take. And if money was the issue, and if the Giants didn't offer him 800 million as opposed to seven. See, you and I and everybody else can never imagine the Giants being the highest bidder. I don't believe it. I do not believe it. Did they offer him 500 million? Yeah, probably. Would they be willing to go to six? Yeah. Did they offer him 700 million dollars? I don't believe it. They certainly didn't offer him eight. He signed for seven. So. Uh, I can only assume you're a Giant fan, Vicky. So uh, I get it. Um, and in the same sense, uh, I I love to see organizations develop their own talent. And the Giants have been fixated in drafting similar players for years. And, and, and that frustrates me because they've been good developing pitchers. They won three world championships. You cannot discount that. But other organizations do a better job drafting and developing everyday players. There's, there's absolutely no doubt about that. Thoughts on the 54-yard pass Brock Purdy uh, to Debo Sanders? What well, kind of talked about it? I mean, I said Debo was just running away from people. That was a perfect pass. And... Uh, Debo caught in stride and just ran away from the defense. I mean, um, but that was the one that he ran away from Adams, right? Yeah. Now, Purdy's, Purdy's solid, man. Really, really good player. But when they start talking about MVPs and they're not mentioning Debo's name, and they're certainly not mentioning Trent Williams' name, um, I take a step back because – I mean, you would have to look at some of the vintage 49er teams uh, for this level of talent. Um, nobody's comparing Brock Purdy to Joe Montana, but Brock, Turdy, Brock, Brock Purdy's numbers probably stands up against some of the all-time greats uh, in an individual season, and it's not even over yet. So uh, the system is great for his talents, but we have to be honest. Uh, Brock Purdy is having – an incredible year, and his numbers are his numbers. And he's throwing the great players. He's putting the ball on the money. Uh, fantastic. 
Debo Samuel is one of my favorite players on the 49ers. Good for you. Good. Good for you. So you want to talk about the Niners. Um, they're in good shape. They're 10 and 3. Um, they still have some work to do. Uh, I was looking at the 49ers schedule. And what do you think about the Baltimore game? Um, they play Baltimore in Baltimore. That's going to be tough. That's going to be tough. So I think they still, I think for the 49ers to get the number one seed in the NFC, I think they need to win out. I do. Um, Philly has a tough schedule. And, and I mean, they say Dallas schedule is light. I don't believe that. I think anybody can lose. So the 49ers have, need, just have to keep winning. So we'll see if they can do that. Um, I wanted to talk about the Warriors. Um, I think everybody was exhausted after Friday's game. Um, and I didn't feel like talking to myself because I'm sure everybody was just like, I don't want to think about basketball right now after that after that particular game. If you are a Warrior fan. Now, the one thing that I'll say, I'm talking about the was a 138 to 136 loss to uh OKC. Uh they play Phoenix on Tuesday. The one thing about that particular game is it's like hitting your head against the wall, some of the losses that the Warriors are having. But everything that they're doing is fixable. And I know you're probably saying, Red, I don't care about that. They lost the game that they should have won. Yeah. But are you really going to beat up Draymond? I mean, you might say, Draymond, you know what? That play was not smart. It's not representative of who you are as a basketball player. And then you got to kind of move on. We've never seen Draymond make a play like that before. Not that play. You're going to foul the guy? Lunging at him? I mean, you know, that was just a terrible, terrible play. Give Chet Holmgren credit. I mean, he made the three-pointer at home at Chase to beat the Warriors, send it into overtime. And then he made three tough free throws. Salute. Steph Curry, I'm sure, was like, yo, I'm not going to win the game two times. I've already won the game. I'm not going to win it again. You know, he went out there and played that way and everybody else did. We knew it was over and over time. But, you know, Steph Curry was Steph Curry. He won the game. And then, then OKC took it back. So, for Warrior fans, I got to be really frustrating. But I, I, I honestly believe that um, the Warriors might find something good from that loss because I expect them to come out and be hypersensitive on Tuesday about turnovers. Uh, um, you would think CP3 is going to play for obvious reasons. And quietly, some of their guys are playing well. I mean... You got a vintage Clay game. That's probably Clay's best game of the year. He was only one of two players in the starting lineup that had a, a positive plus minus. He looked fantastic. Four of nine from three, 22 points, was killing the mid range, was not lurking for threes, although he hit some threes. That was a tough loss. Vicky says, Kiddo is my favorite player. He's one of the top. Top tight ends in all the NFL. Vicky also says, I'm so confused about the Warriors. I just can't figure them out. It's hard being a fan. It's hard being a fan, Vicky. It's, it's real hard. RC Rules says, Warriors, it's the vets, yep, who are failing game after game. Wiggs, Loom, Clay, Draymond. Yeah, which is which which gives me some. Some um, some pause and some thinking, uh, some calmness. I think calmness is the best word. That they're going to figure it out. I mean, their record is ten and twelve. They're ten and twelve. They're not six and thirteen or you know five and twelve. No, no, they're ten and twelve. Now, 
the next three games are, are very, very important. Um, you would ex you you would want them to win one of the two road games they have coming up. They play Phoenix on Tuesday. They play the Clippers on Thursday. They should be looking for some get back, and then they play um, the Brooklyn Nets, which would be a good fan game to go to. You got tickets. They should win that game on Saturday. Brooklyn should not be beating them at home. That's for sure. But they got to come out and play. SG says, my name should be called Show Me a Tani. Like the show. Dude, I put that in my tag, man. Stop it. Jerry Maguire. You got to think quicker. I've already come up with that. Vicky says, Draymond and Clay are not the problem. No, they're not the problem. Absolutely not. The problem is a lack of focus, Vicky. I, I, I don't think it's really one particular player. I mean, the coaches have not had a particular strong start to the season. I think that for those of, those of us who watch the Warriors closely um, can easily draw that conclusion, although they're an excellent staff. But they have not done their best coaching this year. We can think to multiple games in which the coaching staff probably had more to do with the losses than the players. And then uh, some of the veterans have not always played their basketball. I mean, as great as Steph Curry is, as much as we admire him, some of Stephen's turnovers are just ridiculous. He knows that. He knows it. Draymond being suspended for five games, that's on, that's on Draymond. That's, on, that's not on anybody else. If Draymond thinks that not being with the team, regardless of what he thought that he was doing, isn't going to hurt the team, come on, man. So, lucky, luckily for them, they had a five-game winning streak. You know? Got out to six and two. Uh, so that gave them some cushion. But 10 and 12, I'm not worried about that. If, if they go 0-3 over the next three games, yeah, uh, I would be concerned if I am a Warrior fan. And I'm a Warrior supporter. Uh, I like to see them win. Uh, after 25 games, being a 10 and 15, that would be a complete downer. But I think if the Warriors are, what, 12 and 13, basically 500, um, they've had one of the toughest schedules this year already. In spite of some of the mishaps that they've had, they've actually played one of the toughest schedules in the NBA. So I'm a reasonable thinker when it comes to basketball um, because I'm watching the game within the game. You know, I'm, 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 I'm watching... Um, and asking myself, can these problems be fixed? Um, are some of these teams fast out the gate? Like the Orlando Magic. Like the Indiana Pacers. The Indiana Pacers really don't know how to play multiple styles of basketball. You know, they play one style. Full speed all the time. And that's good when it's going well. But when it's not going well... Um, you can be beat and you can go on some tough runs. Um, the Warriors know how to play multiple styles of basketball. They've proven that. So if you're a Warrior fan, you know, you know, bite your teeth a little bit, be pissed off, do whatever you do when you get mad, uh, agonize, you know, throw napkins at the TV screen, whatever you do. And um, understand that other teams got problems too. If I'm Phoenix, I'm really concerned if I'm Phoenix. Because they're all or nothing. They don't really have defined role players. They don't. You know, they don't. The Warriors do. I, I, I think I think Phoenix is in danger of losing in the first round. I honestly believe that. So, uh, you want to talk about the Warriors? We can. They take on the Phoenix Suns on Tuesday. Uh, what are your thoughts on the NBA's first in-season uh, tournament that was won by uh, the L.A. Lakers over the Indiana Pacers. Um, hard to say that it wasn't a success. It was a big-time success for a lot of different reasons. 
The ratings were up. Uh, it was a spectacle in, in Vegas. Nobody have any reason to go to Vegas. Uh, the first week of December, everybody was in Vegas. Then be able, able to build partnerships with, with, with entities that they did not have partnerships with before. It was kind of a big deal. And watching LeBron James play to me now is like watching Larry Bird play. I grew up in New York. You would have to search on the rocks as a young person to find a Boston and Larry Bird fan. No, we're all Nick fans and Phil Jeffrey 76 are fans and Dr. J. But as you get older and you start to learn the game of basketball, you start playing the game yourself. You go, whoa, that Bird guy's pretty sweet. And Stephen A. Smith said something that was pretty interesting and pretty intelligent, I think spot on. And I've written about this. If you ask me who's the greatest player of all time, it's always going to be Michael Jordan. For various reasons. But we don't have to compare LeBron versus Michael. Because who's had the better career? I think LeBron's had a better career. If you ask me, when, when you look at everything in its totality, um, I think LeBron's going to have a better career in spite of Mike winning six championships. Mike's, Mike's in a different category. And if you happen to see him play, or if you happen to play against him, you'd be like, wow. But we have never seen anything like LeBron James. In terms of taking care of his back, taking care of his body, and also just being blessed, being blessed with, um, the you know the the type of DNA of physical attributes that we've never seen before, and I say give him so much credit for uh, being exemplary in terms of how a professional athlete should function, because he's done all of those things. In the midst of all the hoopla, all of the ills that can kind of get in your way, he has not allowed any of that to get in his way. Pretty amazing. And watching that tournament, AD had more points. AD played like he should play most games. But LeBron was the best player on the team. LeBron was the best player on the floor. He managed the game in ways that no one else in basketball can do quite like him. There's a couple of guys. Stephen Curry is one of those guys that can control the game within the system. You know, like for instance, when the Warriors played Portland on Wednesday night and the, War and the Warriors got on a run and Steph had the ball in his hand, that last second shot, not last second shot, but that, but, but, but that dagger three, you knew it was over for Portland. The guy who was guarding Steph knew it was over for him. Not many players can do that. Not many at all. Vicky says, I would have liked Indiana to win. Yeah, a lot of people would. But I, I think, again, Vicky, I think it's, um, again, are they that good? Or have they been on a roll? Um, uh, does that style of play work in the playoffs? Uh, those are the types of questions that I ask. I mean, can Indiana really beat Philly in a playoff series? Can they beat Milwaukee? Um, they have to get in the playoffs first. You know, can they beat Miami? A team that's going to grind it out and not allow you to run against them? You know, I think Indiana is definitely better. Um, they are a team that you can't, uh, take for granted, but um, I would be impressed if they make it into the top six and not just be a play-in team. Um, they got the attention of the NBA, that's for sure. So, um, but yeah, the Lakers won the tournament. Winning the tournament for to me for the Lakers was getting five hundred thousand dollars for all of those players who might not have like big time salaries. I was happy for that. I mean, 
I know Phil Handy. You know, coach is going to get their share too. I don't know what percentage they're going to get, but yeah, I mean, people talk like $500,000 is not a lot of money. I'm like, what world are you living? I don't care if you make $40 million a year, whatever LeBron makes. I, I, I don't care. $500,000? Come on now. And when you're on the floor playing, you're not really counting that money. But if you're a free agent, those two-way players get the money too. I was happy for those guys and those ladies who are assistant coaches or have some role within those organizations. The Indiana Pacers, I know, have a full-time female assistant on their bench. I don't know about the Lakers, but I know Indiana does. So I was happy to see that. Also wanted to uh, talk a little bit about uh, Jaden Daniels winning the Heisman Trophy. Um, there was like a 10-year period, maybe in the 2000s or, or in the late 90s, when winning the Heisman Trophy all of a sudden wasn't cool anymore. And I, I think that they, the the fathers and sisters of the Heisman, you know, kind of took a step back and said, wait a minute, this is an excellent brand. We need to spruce it up a little bit. And then all of a sudden over the past decade, it's actually become prestigious again. And um, you could eat a long time. You, you could eat the rest of your life um, off of winning the Heisman Trophy. And um, Jaden Daniels might be a decent uh, NFL quarterback, particularly if he goes to the right organization, like a Baltimore-esque type of team. But winning the Heisman Trophy um, is going to be good for him. And it was, and his parents talked so eloquently uh, about his work ethic. Um, they, I, I guess they have, I mean, they seem to have like a, a real spiritual and moral foundation as well that just really helped him stay grounded. So I'm happy for him. But it is officially a stat award. Because if you look at all things being equal, um, you would have thought that uh, Penix Jr. or Bo Nix would have won it. Not Marvin Harrison Jr. because they didn't beat Michigan. They didn't even, as a team, they didn't even play that well. He did, but not them. But I thought that what Bo Nix and um, Penix Jr. did uh, was spectacular. And when you look at the passing numbers between Bo Nix and, and Daniels, they were very similar, almost equal. The difference was uh, Dan Daniels, uh, Jaden Daniels had 10 rushing touchdowns. So I think it's more of a stat award. I had no problem with him winning. Good for him. Vicky says, my life would change with that type of money. Wow. USA didn't do anything. Uh, you mean this year? Yeah, I mean, I mean, Vicky, how jaded can people be, right? A half a million dollars? Nothing? Come on now. Even if you said, okay, I don't need the money. Can you imagine giving two nonprofits Two hundred fifty thousand each. What about five nonprofits? A hundred thousand dollars each for after-school programs. You, you know, to fund whatever uh, 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 focus they have. That'd be unbelievable. And I only bring that up because this morning I was watching uh, a CBS Good Morning. I, I, I always watch that on Sunday mornings. So they have some of the most interesting stories. And um, they did a story on this gentleman from, I guess from, he was from Ohio, very quiet and kind of lived in his, lived in a very uh, tight, a tight box. I don't want to say he lived in a box, but he didn't have a whole lot of, uh, uh, you know, communication with other folks. He just lived his life, worked at work. The guy saved over a million dollars, was very frugal, and we've heard this before, but he left uh, over a million dollars 
to five different charities in his city. And they were flabbergasted that, that they were given this money. Uh, so good things happen sometimes when, you know, you look at sports. I mean, you can be very cynical and think that um, it doesn't matter, but it can matter. $500,000 is a lot of money. So, um, and I was jumping back and forth. Vicky, I was talking about the, uh, you know, the prize money for the NBA in uh, in season tournament, and then kind of talking about Jaden Daniels winning the Heisman Trophy, which I thought was cool. I didn't have a problem with it, but I think it is a stat award at this point. Um, looking to the Final Four in football, bowl season get ready to start, and I'm sure we'll have many conversations about this. But um, Michigan, Alabama, uh, Texas, and Washington. Um, I think Alabama's going to win. You know, I think Alabama, this is a down year, supposedly for Alabama. But there's something about that this team that I think um, is going to surprise people. So we can talk about that if you want to. That's all good. Um, I also wanted to uh, mention this came out of uh, left field. Vicky says Michigan all the way. I would like, you know what? I wouldn't have a problem with Michigan winning because that would, I think, um, maybe create a lane for Harbaugh to get back to the NFL. Um, the Chargers, I think, are going to be looking for a coach. Uh, a lot of people don't like Harbaugh. In spite of him being a great coach, he's always won. But I would love to see him in the NFL uh, coaching uh, the Chargers or the Raiders. You know, he obviously has a relationship with that, you know, with the Davis family. Um, they're going to be looking for a coach. I mean, I love the moxie that Antonio uh, uh, Spears has brought to the team, but how long is he going to go with Aiden? I mean, I mean, listen, this rookie backup quarterback had a moment. He had he had he had two games, maybe three games, in which he played okay. After that, he's been very average. I mean, yo. Jimmy, I mean, you're going to cut Jimmy G anyway. Now, okay, I got it now. I just saw my own, I just answered my own question. Why isn't Jimmy G playing? Because if he gets hurt, there's more guaranteed money, I would assume. I get it. I just have to, like, use my critical thinking skills every now and then. Okay, I get it. So... From, from Antonio's standpoint, it's really a farce. Yeah, Antonio, go out there and be the head coach. Turn it around with a rookie quarterback who's not playing well. And we're just going to ride him out. Even though Jimmy G might be better. I get it. So they're basically throwing the season away because they don't want to pay Jimmy G. Because they're going to cut him. All right, I dig it. Start fresh with a new coach. Uh, Harbaugh's not a bad answer. If you're trying to fill that position. Now, here's some breaking news. And I think he's going to knock this one out the park. Mark Jackson. St. Uh, Saint John's, Saint John's Storm fame. Former Nick. Indiana Pacer, legendary NBA broadcaster, much maligned in many circles around the country, former Warrior coach. Mark just formed a partnership with Cameron. Cameron's a rapper, uh, and uh, Cameron has kind of transitioned for now. Uh, he and Mace, his boy Mace, they do a online sports talk show called This Is What It Is. And surprisingly to a lot of people, it's really taken off. 
Uh, they have their own style. They have their own lane. Um, but it is authentic. And I don't think anybody can say that they're not speaking their truth. Um, their style is their style. And the thing about Mace and, and Cameron, a lot of people don't know this, but they were actually um, really good high school players in the New York area before they became famous rappers. They were actually ballers, like college level basketball players. So, you know, like many New Yorkers, like many folks in, you know, the Bay Area, LA, Chicago, these are real basketball fans that uh, I think they can talk about that uh, particular sport more intently than maybe some of the others, but they have opinions and they're sports fans. And I think in, in this era, it's probably all you have to have. Now, I was a little confused at first because I thought Mark was going to be on their show. And although he might make an appearance, this is a partnership. He's going to have his own show. Now, Mark is a reverend. Uh, they use language that I'm sure doesn't uh, uh, jive with how he communicates. But I guess he's found a way to kind of uh, 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 make peace with that. But the idea of, of Mark Jackson talking about basketball, and I would say sports in general in life, uh, it's going to be a hit. Um, as you guys know, Mark and I play against each other quite a bit during our youth, and we played together for multiple years uh, when we were in college. Every summer, Mark and I played together. Uh, in multiple leagues. We played at City College and we played together at uh, West 4th Street. And he made me a better player. This dude is brilliant. He's a brilliant basketball mind. And what makes for good radio and good television, he's not afraid to speak his mind. You ask him a question, he's going to give you an answer. And um, yeah, I think he's going to shake things up. And he's real smart too. As she says, Frank, you should watch cricket. <laughs> um, I, I would have to learn the game first. <laughs> SG, where do you come up with this stuff? A lot of it's comedy, Vicky. Yeah, but 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 how much comedy, right? Yeah. So what do you think about that? If Mark had a show. Would you give it a listen or would you just say, ah, I don't like Mark. I can't stand Mark. Because I'm going to say this, you know, I, I'm not really like one of these people who listens to national broadcasters, with, you know, with a fine tooth comb and say, oh, you made a mistake there. She made a mistake. Um, I'm not convinced what ESPN uh, is putting out there now is better than Mark and Van Gundy. I think it was just one of those situations where, they wanted to make a change, which is okay. Uh, but a lot of times people think when changes happen, it's because uh, one is better than the other. And I don't think that's the case at all. I don't always, sometimes that might be true, but in the case of ESPN's broadcast teams, I don't feel that that's um, truthful. It, does it mean that Doc Rivers um, isn't good or uh, um, can't think of her name right now. I'm having a, a brain fart, but and, and and she's really she's really good. What's her name? Help me out here. Vicky says I like Mark. She actually was a really good basketball player. What's her name? I hate when I do that. But yeah, Mark is going to have a talk show. Uh, he's been preaching forever, so I, I know he can galvanize a crowd. But uh, I, I want to see how it uh, is received by the general public. And um, got to give Cameron a lot of credit also. Talk about a, 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 a gutsy move. I'm sure he might have had some folks maybe step to him and say, yo, Cameron, what do you think about this? But, uh, yeah. What are you doing for Christmas? Oh, man. Watching a lot of basketball. Um, 
I'll probably make uh, make a nice dinner. Um, I don't know what I'm doing physically. I might just be home, just kind of chilling, um, relaxing. Um, I usually travel. Um, I have the last couple of years. I'm not getting on a plane this Christmas. So uh, I have a nice meal, man. Make some nice greens, uh, maybe some chicken, mac and cheese, cornbread. I just watch a lot of ball. Maybe I'll go to the movies. Not quite sure. Vicky says, if Steve doesn't resign with the Warriors, or if Steve doesn't resign with the Warriors, what do you think about Andre Godala? Uh Nah. I don't, I mean, I think Steve is probably going to ride it out. Um, and it's going to coincide for when the vets retire. That's what I think. Um, if the Warriors develop a young star, then I could see um, someone like an Iguodala who's real smart uh, and into basketball, um, potentially getting into coaching. But Vicky, Andre Iguodala, you, I mean, you know he's the acting president um, of the Players Association now. The, the former president resigned, and Iguodala is the acting president now of the NBA Players Association. So... Uh, he has his hands full doing that. He also has a venture capitalist fund uh, that focuses on technology that he has gone out and secured funds from players. So, uh, again, I mean, that's something that I'm sure he wants to show uh, can be successful and make a, mo- make a lot of money for himself and also players. So coaching is not beneath him. But coaching requires a tremendous amount of time. And um, I don't think he wants to do that. It'd be interesting, though. Um, Their assistant coach, uh, Kenny Atkinson, wouldn't surprise me if he got a shot. Uh, Would not surprise me if... I mean, this is the last year of Kerr's contract. So uh, do, do I think Kerr wants to sign up for... Five more years? I don't think so. I, I, I think if Kirby signs with the Warriors and if, and if things don't go horrible, I can see it happening. Three years. You know, three years, 10 to 15 million a year. I'm not trying to get in his bag, but he would be one of the highest paid coaches in the league. I mean, why not? Why not coach Stephen Curry for another three years? You know, Draymond's locked up. And Vicky, it's interesting, Vicky, because I think that you and I were were on the same plane with regards to Clay. Even be, even before Clay came out and had a good game against OKC, we were both saying Clay's not the problem. Clay's gonna be fine. Warriors got other issues, um, and I think many of them are, are really health related. You know, it, it takes time to figure it out. It really does. Some teams never figure it out, but the Warriors are too smart not to. And um, that's why I'm looking forward to Tuesday's game because they're going to come out on Tuesday and might be their best game of the year. It, I mean, they're not going to be tired. They're not going to be bored. You have all of these allegiances to Phoenix with Kerr, Kevin Durant, Chris Paul. So... I think it'll come out and spit fire. SG says, I'm going to a holiday Christmas party Friday. Yeah, yeah. I don't really I don't I don't think we really care about your personal life, dude. Don't get in your feelings. I'm kind of joking with you, man. But you, you know, I mean, how does that fit into a sports talk show? It doesn't really. Vicky says, Clay has always been a slow starter. Yeah, he has. He has been. Um, And hopefully that's just it. Uh, um, But I do think that uh, playing with intelligence uh, is a factor. Think about it. The better shots Clay takes, the more shots go in. You know? I mean, the, the more... 
three point shots off of down screens and curls that he takes when his feet are not set is generally not good for Clay. It's not good for the Warriors. So I, I just think utilizing his basketball IQ um, and being strategic with regards to how much he plays, get him off the court if he's not playing real well and get somebody else in there. There's nothing wrong with putting Moody in there uh, or, or, or somebody else, you know. But I like Clay out on the court because he creates driving lanes. The opposition has to respect him as a shooter. And um, the Warriors' offense does not work without great spacing. So um, good for Clay. Uh, I was surprised that Kaminga had 24 points, but he had a minus. He, he was minus 15 and plus minus. And and what that means is that when he was on the court, things weren't going well. Uh, in spite of that, I like his trajectory. Uh, still makes a couple of bad fouls, but what a talent, man. You know, what a talent. So hopefully he's going to come out and flash on Tuesday as well. He's putting together some, you know, some good efforts, efforts on a consistent basis. So I definitely want to see that continue. I also want to talk about, I'm not going to give anything away. But I went to the movies this weekend. And it's funny because you ever watched the, like, like I'll give you a perfect example. Um, I saw a movie a couple of weeks ago called, I think it was called Next Goal Wins or something like that. And I, and I talked about it briefly on air. The promotion for this movie, the, the, the trailer, none of it was really good at all. It was terrible in my opinion, but the movie was really good. Uh, this weekend, I saw the new John Woo flick, and John Woo is, you know, one of the great action movie directors of our time. You know, uh, he, he did one of the John Wick movies, maybe he did a couple of them, I'm not quite sure. But he um, just directed this movie, it's called Silent Night. And when you think of Silent Night doing December, what do you think of? You think of Christmas, right? Or some type of like creepy Christmas movie with like, you know, with uh, uh, somebody coming with an axe or something like that. Uh, uh, Amityville Horror meets, you know, like coming home or something like that. Silent Night. The movie has nothing to do with Christmas. It's it's really not gory like that. It's um, it's a movie about revenge and action. It's an action revenge movie. Uh, that is sneaky entertaining. Now the budget for the movie is only like maybe twenty million dollars. So I think they probably maybe didn't have any more money to market. You don't see all no name stars. Nobody's a big star, but the movie is really entertaining. And it's very similar to me. If you, um, who is a Ben Affleck's ex-wife, the woman who does all of the credit card commercials, she did a movie called Peppermint. I don't know, about I don't know, six, seven, eight years ago now. Um, and this movie Peppermint, I'm sure it, I mean, you probably saw it like three or four times. Didn't do great numbers in the theaters. It did all right. But it's one of those movies that when it's on, uh, you go watch it. I mean, you I mean, you just watch this movie. And I think this movie, Silent Night, is like that. Do you have to go see it in the theater? No. But if you like action movies, uh, you would like it. You definitely would like it. So um, it just kind of shows you that making the movies is only part of the process. You got to make the movies. You got to market them. You got to tell the story in the trailer. And in my opinion, they didn't do a good job. But I thought John Woo did a really good job directing this movie. Silent Night. Check it out. Let me know what you think. Uh, Vicky says, I want to see the boys in the boat. Yeah. Yeah, I want to see that also. Um, um, looks interesting. Um 
I want to see um, American Fiction. Um, that's coming out. And also, um, I'm probably going to go see The Color Purple, you know. You should watch the movie Ferrari. Uh, and it follows the personal and professional struggles of Enzo Ferrari. Yeah, I, you know what? I Has it come out yet? Because I heard good things about it. Yeah, definitely going to check that out. No doubt. All right. I want to be respectful of everybody's week coming up. I'm sure you got things to do. I certainly do. But I think we covered a lot tonight. Um, the big stories in sports, we've probably been hitting on uh, for quite some time. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, the trailer is actually pretty good. The movie Ferrari comes out on Christmas Day. Yeah, I won't see it on Christmas Day, but I'm definitely going to check it out, SG. Um, but, yeah, um, there's not a lot more that you can say. Uh, the 49ers won. Uh, they looked impressive. Uh, not outrageously good, but they did their job. They didn't take Seattle lightly like some other teams might have. Um, Debo is playing as well as he's ever played right now, which is great to see because as soon as he got paid, people talked about him dropping off. And and he wasn't in the best shape. But right now, um, I don't think he's ever played better football than he's, than he's playing right now. Next week, it could be Ayuk. I mean, Ayuk is, he's had a phenomenal year. Kiddo is playing like a top five tight end. C CMC is, what, one of the one, two, or three best running backs in all of football. And Brock Purdy uh, is a top 10 quarterback, in my opinion. Uh, and if you're a top 10 in, in, in the NFL, you're a franchise quarterback. Uh, so... In terms of ranking him versus this person, that person, I don't have to do that because I I, I think it because when people start talking about how good Brock Purdy is, uh, they get emotional about it because if you're going to tell me Brock Purdy is a better quarterback than Dak Prescott, nah, no, based on what? Better than Matt Matthew Stafford? Come on. Um, the last point I want to make is this. Fans and the industry, particularly the NFL, they are so fast to label quarterbacks as a success story or a failure. Because they put everybody in the same box. And they assume that everybody learns at the same rate. It, it, it pisses me off because so many careers are ruined by this. I'm going to get there. We don't know what Jordan Love is going to be. We don't know. I, I, I'm not saying that he's the next Brett Favre or, you, you know, the next Aaron Rodgers. I'm not saying any of that. What I am saying is that he looks different now than he did at the beginning of the year and certainly last year. The game has slowed down for Jordan Love. His physical mechanics are starting to manifest on a consistent basis. His footwork is better. He's going through his progressions. Why? Because he got it. It's, it's taken him some time. Brock Purdy is a totally different animal. When he stepped on the field, from a, from a mental standpoint, he was ready to go. Maybe he learns faster. Maybe the fact that his dad was a coach or whatever. But he was able to um, uh, acclimate himself from a bench player to a starter very quickly. Maybe as quick as anybody we've ever seen before. Everybody's not like that. It doesn't speak to what your journey is going to be. Justin Fields looks different now. Doesn't he look different? He's always had a great arm, put crazy numbers up in college. Why would they think this guy can't play? He can play. Just give him time. 
So all of those hasty moves that the Cubs, I mean, not the Cubs, the Bears were thinking about making because they have the number one overall pick. I mean, they have Carolina's pick, which is going to be a top three pick, maybe number one. You're going to get rid of Justin Fields now and draft Caleb Williams out of USC? If he comes out, I wouldn't do it. I would not do it. I might draft down and get me two more top 10 picks, get some offensive linemen, get, you know, if Harrison Jr. comes out, that's the guy who I'd be looking at. I'm just trying to say, you know, relax. Vicky says, if Brock wins Super Bowl before that, he will be better. I agree with that. Why are you so sensible, Vicky? Why do you make so much sense? Why do you have such intelligent responses? Oh, I know why. Because you're intelligent. Because you're smart. That's why. I'm rooting for Dak. Uh, the 49ers win. Salute to the 49ers. I, I mean, because they do things the right way. But if the Dallas Cowboys won a Super Bowl for the first time in 30-some-odd years, wouldn't have a problem with it. Particularly when you look at Jerry Jones, I mean, I mean, I mean, he speaks to his mortality more than anybody. Um, I don't think that he can say, "Oh, yeah, you know, with the next ten years, you know, we'll win it, and I'll be here to see it." I don't know if he can say that. So, it's going to be an interesting fight down the stretch. SG says San Francisco Forty Nine is to get a win next week against the Arizona Cardinals. If they want to clinch the playoffs, it, yeah, they need to win every game because Dallas, you know, Dallas and uh, Philly actually. The, the, the cool thing about tonight's football game, I don't know if you saw it, Jalen Hurts played his tail off, minus the fumble. He put the how many drops did, that that the wide receivers have on Philly tonight? Six, seven fumbles, drops. I was happy to see Jalen have a bounce back game. So he could kind of quiet the noise a little bit. I thought he played really, really well tonight. So that was good for him. All right. All right. I am a, I'm going to get out of here and probably going to be back on Tuesday night uh, after the Warriors game against uh, the Phoenix Suns. Hopefully everybody will get off, uh, will start their week um, off well and um, be safe out there. RC rule says Seahawks, Eagles, Seahawks, Seahawks, Eagles, Seahawks, Cardinals, Ravens. Yeah, that um, obviously um, that Ravens game jumps out at you. Yeah, it does. And it does for a lot of different reasons. First of all, um, defensively, Baltimore is rock solid. They're good. And uh, when you look at Warner, and Greenwall, um, great players. But Roquan Smith is equal to those guys. Uh, he's never out of position. He's like Warner, you know? Uh, he's like, I mean, he, he's like Warner. And um, they're going to do a good job, I think, bottling uh, Kittle up because they, you know, they take care of tight ends pretty good. So Purdy's going to have to probably do something um, – Running the football, or CMC's gonna have to play well, or just or just really beat them deep. Uh, even though they have good corners as well, Humphrey's one of the better ones. Baltimore's tough to beat, particularly at home. So uh, we'll see what's up with that. But uh, looking for some great football over the next four weeks. All right, I'm gonna do my thing. I'm gonna get out of here. Uh, SG said this. He said. Frank, I won't be able to join you on Tuesday because I'll be at the Sharks game. Enjoy the game, brother. I'm happy for you. Yes, Vicky, uh, that Baltimore 49er game could be a preview of the Super Bowl. That's not far-fetched. Uh, maybe likely. Um, wouldn't bet against it. All right, success in getting paid is a manifestation of the whole process. 
If you're an individual, don't do things to help other people make their lives better. As far as I'm concerned, you haven't done nothing. Um, you like the show, hit that like button. You know, play the drums on that like button, man, because it definitely helps the show. And it exposes the In The Dungeon show to people that don't know about the show. So that's a good thing. Um, subscribe if you like the show. All right, if you like it, subscribe to it. The numbers are going up. Thanks to you all, not me. And uh, I appreciate it. And also, you want to follow me on X, on Twitter, um, at Big Frank Red. I generally follow back. I engage throughout the week. And uh, it is all good. All right. That's it. That's the show. I'll talk to you on Tuesday night. Hopefully, you'll join me. Uh, until then, be safe and peace.